what is happening y'all cowboy here and welcome back to our next build video in our ghost of tsushima build series the master shinobi now big thanks to sony as always for a copy of the game and in this build we're going to be taking a look at maximizing the potential of our ghost weapons to cause as much damage as possible we're going to be going over a couple of key combinations that you can use to just absolutely decimate groups of enemies such as the one you're about to see right here just toss out a nice little firecracker Everybody decides they want to see what it is. One black powder bomb, and boom. Every single enemy will die. So, jumping straight on into how to make something like this possible. Oh, come on, let me go to my menu. There we go. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to want to rock the Kensei armor. Now this comes from a Mystic Quest similar to before, but it is an absolutely phenomenal armor choice if you are a big fan of the ghost weapons. We have 30% resolve gains, 30% extra damage on ghost weapons, and most importantly, striking an enemy with a ghost weapon causes that enemy to deal 50% less damage and receive 50% more damage. An incredibly potent final perk. Now to get this, once again, you're going to be doing a Mythic Tale. This time it's the Six Blades of Kojiro. Now you can get this early in Region 2. Uh, the quest itself is picked up over here at Omugi Cove, but it's going to involve you going around the map and fighting a bunch of duels. Five duels in particular that look like little icons like this on your map. After completing those five duels, you can then duel Kojiro himself to get his armor. Now, as for the charms, here things get a little bit trickier because there is a lot of flexibility, but personally, I would recommend the Charm of Incineration and the Charm of Hidden Blades. The Charm of Incineration is going to add a fire effect onto our Black Powder Bombs, as you just saw right there. Our Black Powder Bombs already deal a ton of damage, but with Charm of Incineration, we're going to make sure that when we throw out that bomb, anything it hits will die. Uh, just kind of how you saw right there, the bomb is already strong enough to wipe out all the lesser enemies, yet despite that, the heavies were still alive, so the burn effect is going to make sure to take them out. Now, early on, this might not be necessary, but in Region 3, where enemies are a little bit tankier, it'll certainly come in handy. Charm of Hidden Blades is just fantastic because being able to throw out five kunai, uh, you can basically just double toss a set of kunai and wipe entire groups of enemies, especially because keep in mind, we have that bonus here. So our second set of kunai we throw out are going to deal 50% more damage, allowing us to deal massive, massive damage with those kunai. Now, as for some secondary choices that are worth considering, uh, Toxic Demise is a decent choice if you want to play more of a uh, super stealthy shinobi, one where you're just never seen by enemies. Uh, going for Unseen Respite for a shinobi that is more in the fray, working with your smoke bombs to essentially full heal and then chain assassinate enemies. And then Uneven Standing is a decent choice, but honestly, I didn't find this all that useful. Usually sticky bombs are going to kill something or already leave them vulnerable long enough that you can get the kill in. Now, as for the two that I'd recommend, Incineration, you're going to pick this up from the side tail, the Traitor. It is the fourth Masako tail. As for Hidden Blades, this one you can actually get quite early. Looking down at the very first region, fortunately it didn't uh, take me down there. Here in the Ariake region, we have the Ariake Lighthouse right over here. And completing that will get you access to the Charm of Hidden Blades. Now, as for our minor choices, Charm of Silence from the Fox Dens is an excellent choice here. Uh, reducing enemy detection obviously has great synergy with a ghost style of play and the massive resolve gain if you have it fully leveled up is certainly nothing to scoff at. Charm of Enduring Affliction is phenomenal because it's going to make the fire effect burn enemies even harder. It's going to last 50% longer. But not only that, we do have other uh, other ways that we're going to be able to to deal damage via effects. Uh, beyond the fire, we of course have our fire arrows if we want to use those. We can light enemies on fire with the explosive arrows here. If you've picked up the blowgun, we have both hallucination darts and poison darts, and those effects are going to last longer as well. So all in all, just for this style of play, Enduring Affliction is incredibly strong. And then lastly, we double up on Charm of Advantage, just giving us an extra 40% damage onto our ghost weapons. Now, as for where to pick up these, Silence, of course, is the Fox Den's Enduring Affliction. comes from the side tail, A Debt Repaid. Uh, and then Charm of Advantage comes from the Cost of Iron, as well as Nato and the Saki Seller, which is the second Kenji tail. Now, as for some main techniques you can do, obviously what you just saw right there, going for a firecracker into a black powder bomb is incredibly potent uh, easily one of the strongest combinations in the game for just absolutely shredding entire groups of enemies but this build also works very very well with the dance of wrath mystic art that you can get 
And the reason for that is keep in mind that we're able to throw out up to five kunai. So we're going to toss out five kunai. Most enemies that we're attacking are probably going to die outright. And anything that survives is about to take 50% more damage, which we can easily decimate them with the Dance of Wrath. Couple that with the 30% resolve gain on this armor and the massive resolve gain we have on the uh, extra fox den charm. And you're able to almost just spam the ability. So all in all, it comes together to form an incredibly potent combination of abilities that essentially has you just sneaking around like a filthy shinobi in Sekiro, just murdering everyone before they even really have a chance to do anything. This first guy. I do love me a good wind stance kick. So similar to before, as always, the firecracker combo is incredibly potent here. Even with that one archer that found me, as you can see, I still have enough time that I can go ahead and toss this on out. And just that right there, we've already cleared out most of this camp. So let's let's draw everybody out. Give you a feel for the the kunai combos. Yeah, that camp's dead. Just just like that, didn't even really need to do anything. Uh, the kunai are incredibly strong with this build. Like it's it's borderline OP. Um, and then I got the the archer build is honestly probably more ridiculous than this. Even it doesn't have as much AOE damage, uh, but the archer build just has infinite headshots. And we're going to be covering that in a video that's coming up soon. But unfortunately, I'm running out of Mongols. So the next video we're going to be fighting the same two camps here. Um, I mean this this build. I wish. Honestly, my only real regret with showcasing this playstyle is I don't have a enemy base that's populated enough to show just how ridiculous this can be. Uh, on some of the the primary game missions where you're assaulting bases and fighting 20, 30 Mongols at once, this thing is devastating because your bombs will take out groups of 5 to 10. Your kunai can easily decimate groups of 5. Just two kunai tosses and whole groups are dead. Which we're going to show that in just a moment here using uh we're going to we're going to start off with the firecracker lure a bunch of enemies out there you go don't touch the bears black powder just becomes absurd you basically have ghost stance active uh, perpetually if that's something you're interested in Let me gather everybody up. Don't forget the smoke bomb, of course, with chain assassination. Incredibly strong. Throw it on down to the heal. And then just go into the chain assassination. Kind of as you can see, this is like stuff isn't even able to hit us just because we do so much damage. 
present. Like, <laughs> we've just obliterated everything. Um, now keep in mind, obviously, with a playstyle like this, you're going to want to be stocking up on these materials. So as a reminder, you can go to any trapper in the game and buy materials. You could you could replenish every single thing for probably about 300 supply, uh, which really isn't all that much, all things considered. So that's going to wrap up this one. Um, I don't do this playstyle a lot. Personally, I'm a much bigger fan of the like hardened samurai playstyle, like the last build video, but... If you're struggling on bases or just looking to knock out the Mongol camps real fast, perhaps, you know, trying to finish cleaning up the map, uh, a pure ghost weapon playstyle like this is absolutely devastating, as you saw here. So either way, thanks for coming on by. I'm going to do one more of these, taking a look at a uh, very min-maxed archer setup that I think a lot of y'all will enjoy. So stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you then.